What's up guys, a little geeking out video today. I got so many messages about this when I had posted a picture. Just a total little geek uh, video for us Les Paul, or just guitar freaks. What we have here is a 1978 Les Paul standard uh, that is owned by my good friend Bob Gills and that Neil Sean used to play. And uh, just a great story, you know, cause uh, in the early nineties, you might have maybe, or even late 80s, I can't remember what Bob told me. You might have seen this maybe a few times on stage, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, actually, I'll call Bob and I'll tape the conversation. He uh, said it's cool for me to do that. But, uh, you know, Bob was uh, his guitar tech at the time. And obviously, you know, when you're on the road together like that, you're you become family. And back then, of course, you know, all the conversations and lifestyle and everything and but the way i understand it is you know it was a little bit of a race who's going to do the whole frankie thing on the les paul first and uh you know there was alex of course from rush and neil and eddie at the time of course uh, being the absolute you know king of influences um and so bob uh, went and had this done and uh, just funny story how neil played it and then owned it, but didn't want to pay for it because, you know, he gets shit for free. And then just, uh, you know, I, I just kind of stayed with Bob and <laughs> just just a killer story. But, um, what, you know what, I'll call Bob and just just kind of listen to the, um, uh, the story. I mean, Bob, you know, has so many, many, many great stories, of course, having been in the scene for so long. If you look at the serial 7074-8601, um, that is, uh, 78, March 15th, production number 101. And for you who don't know, the standards back then in 78 had, you know, this apex. This is, of course, all done after the fact, and we'll get to that in a second. And they had a little bit of a different headstock shape, too. It was a little bit wider here and kind of curvier. And then over time, of course, that started changing as you know, with the 59s and prior, you have kind of like that thinner, prolonged. And then uh, this was kind of a little bit awkward looking to me. It's almost like the custom, but what saves the custom is that it's a little bit wider on the top and of course has the triple binding. I'll show you here what I'm talking about. So on the custom, the headstock is actually really cool because, you know, the binding saves it. And if you look on the 59s, they have like this thinner, prolonged thing something that they kind of copied on the on the Nighthawk and on the on this one on the uh, mid 70s to kind of early 80s they had like this weird little wider bottom but um yeah just just freaking cool cool guitar let's see what Bob says so you built two of these guitars and then what happened uh, and then and then I, I I Neil came and played it at the gig at my band's gig and you were in a band at the time, which was a uh, like like Black Dog, whatever it was called. Yeah, and and uh, and so the guitar I was working with was his 1977 Les Paul Deluxe, which is on all of his great albums. I mean, they're on Frontiers and um, you know Don't Stop Believing, Captured, all that stuff, right? Uh -huh. And I loved that guitar, and I was like, this is a, my favorite guitar in the world. You know, and we were working on it. We went from different neck pickups. He, he put a, a sustainer in it after, after, you know, his run with Journey with it. And he was doing this thing called the Braxes, and he put their sustainer in the guitar. And it was like, you know how fun sustainers are. And I thought, man, I just want to do a Van Halen one where I go, I just have one pickup. And, and you know, because Joe Perry did something very similar to my guitar. Um, you could, if you look online, Joe Perry did something too. And I, and I knew Joe Perry at the time and I wanted to do kind of something in between his and Joe Perry's guitar. And I talked to Gibson, they said, come on down. And they routed that guitar out in one day. That's crazy, man. Wow. And it was, uh, you know, to have a Les Paul with a, with a Floyd Rose wasn't really even out there it's not like you just buy the access now i mean back then it was like okay who's going to be the first one to have a les paul with a with a with a floyd rose you know 
Yeah, and it, at, at the time I was working for Neil, they were kind of discussing the axis. So Neil was already going to go to Gibson and get a guitar, right? Uh huh. And Neil's guitar, um, it, Neil's guitar is a 1977 Deluxe. And so I have this 1978. This one here, the standard. And, and he loved it, and he, go, and he goes, are you sure you want to butcher that guitar? <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude, I, I want it. You know, talk about butchering it, yeah. <laughs> but the, no, the thing is, not only was Neil's guitar great, but I really liked the neck. And I said, this reminds me of my 1977 at home. And at the time, you know, it was a guitar tech. I wasn't afraid to butcher guitars, right? And so I went, I went and had it painted, filled in the whole bit, and, and, uh, and Dave showed it to Neil. And I had both of them made. I showed both of them to him. He says, I don't pay for guitars, dude. <laughs> I don't pay for guitars. I'm Neil Sean. I get them for free. <laughs> yeah. And so and so uh, I said, hey, I'm, I have no problem owning this guitar. Oh, my God. It's funny. And, and, and it was like, it was, it, was, it was my favorite guitar for, God, 20 years. Because he wasn't getting, I, I wanted to get a backup for his 1977. Oh, I see. Okay. You know? And, and, I, and I said, why don't we get a second one of these guitars? And, and Neil's not like that. Neil does it. He's like, if, if, if I break a string, I'll go to a strat. I don't care. You know, he, he's like, I don't need the exact copy of this. And, and, and you know, and, and Neil's deadly with the strat. Yeah, yeah, he's really good, yeah. Like, you know, he does all that Hendrixy stuff on lights and everything. And, uh, but yeah, that guitar, man, I cannot believe he sold it. I was, I, I could, I freaked out. Yeah. I couldn't, but, but he, he sold it for a really good reason because, uh, that guy gave him like more than $250,000 for it. You know, it's funny. I can listen to these old school guys. Uh, I can listen to their stories day and night and, and Bob, especially who has been in the scene for so long and owns hundreds of these guitars and has been with every freaking major artist in the world on the road. It's just, I mean, we stayed on the phone for another hour. I mean, stuff I can't even share here on the video, but, <laughs> but, but anyway, it's just cool. You know, just a cool little piece of uh, rock history here, you know, and how, you know, back then, uh, I like how Bob says, you know, I call Gibson and I'm like, Hey, can I come over? I need something done. And then, then you do it, you know? And, um, What's cool here, I put it in the light. You can kind of see what, what they ended up doing. Obviously, uh, you know, I'll start on, you know, I'll start on the front. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just, and it's, this, you want to talk mojo? I mean, first and foremost, the way these guitars were built and, and just with the, you know, you can tell this thing is made out of, 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 of wood and dirt. And it, it's just so amazing. Uh, it, it's hard to describe the mojo of these older instruments and also the mindset of people. And the one thing I can tell you is go read old magazines and it'll kind of give you an idea of how the mindset was back then. But shit had to be good or you wouldn't have a job. And my favorite Les Paul years are like 87, 88. Ironically, what Slash says, because those standards were truly freaking, I mean, but that's a whole different story. So, so, so you can see here, First and foremost, the, the routing, the way it's cut out, uh, it's just, it's just so butchered and cool. And here's, of course, where the ABR was. And then it just patched it and eventually just freaking painted over it, you know, some car paint. And there you go. Here's, of course, your second, um, uh, uh, tone and volume knob, right? And then, of course, you had to, you know, screw in the string tensioner here because you were putting on a Floyd and, and this is a Floyd from what? Yeah, this is an all original back from late 80s, whatever. I mean, just the oxidation. This is, you can see from the sweat of it being played by all these people and Neil and everybody and Bob. And <laughs> it's just so badass. And then here where the original peg was and where they put in the new one, like a locking one, which is completely oxidized at this point. Uh, you have the apex, as I mentioned, on these older... Uh, um, standards and customs 
And then what's really cool, so now the toggle control had to be covered up. So it's kind of cool. They didn't leave it. They actually put wood filling in it. And then again, painted over it, as you can see here. I'll, uh, there you go. You can kind of see where the circle was, right? On the, like on a regular Les Paul. And then, of course, they had to add this cover, which is really cool. And uh, matter of fact, you know, I'm going to take this off real quick to see how it looks underneath. So super cool. Yeah, you see how they did that? <laughs> oh, God, this is just awesome. Completely rerouted it. There's your uh, a bridge pickup. And then, oh, just so cool. It's just cool. You know, this guitar is 45 years old and the history it has. And it's rare that you get your hands on, on, on these things. And now uh, is this a Samer Duncan? I don't even know what this is like. Oh, it's a custom shop. Yeah, look at that. That's a Samer Duncan custom shop. 78. Jesus, hand wound. I mean, it, it's just incredible. Really, really cool stuff. And then if we go to the back, you see this kind of butchered routing that they did too so they rounded it here just to make it a little bit more conform to the body which is really cool you know again now you just buy the axis or and then look at these battle scars from it being played live by who knows whom including neil so just really cool anyway i just wanted to show you this real quick geek out i'll plug it in real quick um <laughs> you know you got to keep in mind at the time eddie was was the thing to be so i have a feeling the way bob describes it this had a lot to do to kind of trigger what would eventually become the um the uh the axis and remember kind of the les paul was still shaky at this point you didn't have you know the 59 kind of saving the custom shop uh, as it did later as it became more popular again and at the time, well, at the time, you really didn't even have the custom shop as we know it today. Um, so Gibson was going through a little bit of ups and downs and then obviously did well. And then Henry took over, which that was not very good. And now it's a little bit tricky too. It's hit and miss with what these guys are doing. But um, yeah, just really cool. Just really, really cool. Look where the toggle switch is. <laughs> That's just how you did it back then. So... Let's plug it in for like two minutes just to see what this thing screams like. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed just kind of geeking out. I had to share this. All right, we're plugged in real quick. And there's really uh, nothing to do here. Uh, you can tell this is totally any vibe. I think the tone doesn't even do anything. So the tone knob is completely disconnected. This is literally meant to just be a a killing bullet machine is <laughs> a Les Paul with a Floyd and look look how primitive it is it's just there's not even a carve it just cut out it sits an inch over so it clears the pickup and that is that folks I mean, it's just a total shred thing you know <laughs> It's so cool because it gives you like the Frankie vibe and a Les Paul and I've never experienced anything like it. Um, it's so cool and raw and it's plays completely different than an Axis mode and I love how, it's, how they curved it here. So it's just, and I want to go and, and, and switch here. There's nothing there. The tone doesn't work. So it doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> this 
thing is like a, this thing is, 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 I don't even want to say it. It's like a, like a, like a dirty, yeah, you know, <laughs> what a cool freaking mojo guitar, man. I can just picture this thing in the late eighties and early nineties on stage every night, just being abused like a, like a cheap mistress. It's just so freaking cool and authentic. I mean, look at all these things now that has been tried to be duplicated with, uh, with, uh, you know, the, the aging and this is all real you can see the wood here from it being beat up and and the thing just sounds so freaking cool man <laughs> enjoy this uh, just geeking totally geeking out um, just a really 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 cool freaking guitar that I thought uh, uh, I wanted to share real quick so sadly very sadly it has to go back to Bob uh, hopefully mm -hmm. he forgets that I have it and I just keep it but I doubt that will happen mm -hmm. see you around